And we're back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your sit-in host, Rob Dew. It's Friday, January 20th. And I have sitting next to me uh, the health ranger, Mike Adams. He's going to come in and talk about a few things. How's it going, Mike? Hey, pretty good, Rob. Thanks for good having to me see on. Thanks for sitting in. Always good to join you here. And you did the, uh, the radio show earlier today. How was that? Yeah, as always, super high energy, tons of news. Couldn't cover it all. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure one story that you covered that we covered last night was this uh, breaking news. Cancer drugs make tumors more aggressive and deadly. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is, this is major research that shows the failure of chemotherapy drugs. You know, doctors always talk about shrinking tumors. And they say, well, this chemotherapy drug will shrink the tumor by 25% or 30%. And that's true. And that's the way they measure the success of the drug. But what they don't tell you is that due to this mechanism that's now been discovered and published in this science journal, this medical journal, that there is a 300% increase in secondary tumors, especially in the lungs, because the original chemotherapy weakens the immune system response to future cancer tumor attempts. So in other words, yeah, that tumor, the first tumor you had was decreased in size, mm. but now you have a 300% increase in secondary tumors. And that's why, Rob, the number one side effect of chemotherapy is cancer. Wow. And, and then what, and what do they make can, uh, chemotherapy out of, anyway? What is it? Well, they're actually derived from drugs that were used, like mustard gas type of biochemical, or I'm sorry, chemical weapons used in World War I. Mm -hmm. And this comes out of Nazi Germany, Germany. This comes out of IG Farben. And, you know, the, the whole Holocaust era of chemicals and, and crimes against humanity, mm -hmm. that is the, the grandfather, so to speak, of modern chemotherapy drugs which are so toxic that they damage the liver, they damage the kidneys, and they cause a side effect called chemo brain, where your brain, you're actually dumbed down. Mm -hmm. It's a dementia-like effect just from chemotherapy. Well, and I've read a lot about, it's usually not the cancer that kills you. They never say the cancer kills you. It's always the chemo. He died, but they cured the cancer as, yeah. as a result. Well, you know, and people who survive chemotherapy, they call themselves cancer survivors. Mm -hmm. They actually probably should call themselves chemotherapy survivors. Yeah. And uh, so I wonder how this news is going to affect these people, you know, like the uh, Susan G. Komen Foundation and other cancer groups who are out there fighting. You think they're going to take this research and run with it, or you think they're still going to be uh, bought I, off? With the well, let's be clear, Rob. The yeah. cancer industry today is based on a system of lies yeah. and disinformation. So they're not going to take this scientific study that counters their lies. They're not going to embrace that and start teaching people, well, maybe you should use something else. They're going to continue their lies. But importantly, this study, which was published in Cancer Cell, that's a medical journal, mm -hmm. talked about anti-angiogenesis drugs. Right. Well, angiogenesis is the process by which cancer tumors build a blood supply to themselves so that they can steal blood and steal minerals and vitamins and start growing as a larger tumor. That's mm -hmm. how cancer works. But they don't tell you, and Komen doesn't tell you, that broccoli juice is anti-angiogenesis. Yeah. That kale, that juicing celery or eating the, the white uh, stringy substance inside of orange peels mm -hmm. or grapefruit peels, not the peel, but the, the right. white part inside. Yeah. Those are all anti-angiogenesis drugs, wow. so to speak, and they don't give you cancer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and how does this, you know, we're seeing you guys earlier in the year, you and Rob, or I guess last year, you and Rob Jacobson went to Houston to talk with Dr. Brzezinski. Uh, I mean, it looks like we're kind of turning the corner here on, on major breakthroughs in the next couple of years that are actually going to lead to real, you know, cancer cures or at least cancer treatments that aren't going to kill you. Well, I hope so. I mean, I, I think, Rob, those, those already exist. The cures are mm -hmm. here. Right. You can drive down the desert in Arizona where I used to live, and I would drive by seven or eight cancer cures mm -hmm. as I was, you know, just off the parking lot of the cancer clinic. Yeah. And so people would drive by cures and then go in and get poisoned with chemotherapy. Right, right. Now, Dr. Brzezinski, as you mentioned, is using gene-targeted microdoses of different chemotherapy drugs, but in a smarter way that's less toxic. Mm -hmm. So he's not totally holistic, but he's a lot more intelligent about making sure that the drugs you do get are going to work with your genetic profile. Right. And that's a, that's a personalization of, of allopathic medicine, which has merit. Mm -hmm. But the next step is to avoid the poisons altogether and turn to foods, herbs, natural medicines that, that uh, support your body's ability to mm -hmm. fight off cancer rather than compromising it. 
Yeah, we're going to have a guest next week, uh, Russell Means, who's fighting cancer right now, throat cancer yes. and I think he, esophageal cancer. And he's actually, when he came on uh, about a few months ago, he did an interview with Aaron. And from uh, it was about a year from the time that we did an interview with him, and he sounded 100% better than from when we saw him. And, you know, he had just been doing these other, he was staying away from the chemo, staying away yeah. from the other stuff, and trying these other natural cures with some science, some stuff that's going on in Arizona. And so it's going to be interesting uh, to see what happens with his case and what happens with this research. Um, moving on, uh, another interesting article that we covered earlier in the show. Cyborgs are coming from Mail Online. Living brains implanted with electronic chips to replace faulty parts. And we all know how that could happen, you know, faulty parts. And I, I love this uh, quote here from Maddie Mintz. Imagine there's a small area in the brain that is malfunctioning. You know, maybe you're questioning the government too right. much. Or maybe you, you know... The free will section. Exactly, brain, yeah. you know, maybe you're, yeah, you ask too many questions. And imagine that we understand the architecture of this damaged area. So basically what they're doing is taking electronic chips and replacing uh, different parts of the brain. They're doing this in mice. So what's your take on this? Well, there's this arrogance in technical medicine where they think that they, they're going to heroically replace your God-given parts, your biological parts, with their brilliant mechanical parts that never really work, by the way. The right. mechanical heart kills you, you know, and usually in a matter of days, if not hours. Uh, the, the, the new replacement brain parts that they're talking about, you know, those are not going to be as good as the actual neurons that you were born with and that you developed through nutrition and, right. and through living as a human being. So, but there's another concern in all this, Rob. Once they start implanting electronics into human bodies, what are they going to do? They're going to track them. Mm -hmm. They're going to track every emotion, every thought, your sleep patterns. They're going to put trackers that track your, your levels of alcohol. They know when you've been drinking too much, and they'll email you a fine and electron electronically take it out of your debit card in a cashless society. Mm -hmm. You know, They'll monitor your urine. They'll monitor your, uh, your blood sugar levels, and then they'll put diabetes drugs into your food automatically. I mean, the, it's, it's a nightmare of things that they could come up with once they start tr uh, implanting electronics into you. Right, right. So this doesn't sound like uh, this is this article here, which on Mail Online they kind of sensationalize things, makes it seem you know like, uh, like the Terminator. The Terminator is going to come and and uh, it's going to make you better, more superhuman. And um, you know we've already seen people they're going to uh, uh, the eye implants where they can get emails inside their inside their irises and you know they're starting to start off with the glasses and now it's moving into the eye right right so, i mean where's it going to stop and well that's the thing they say it makes you a superhuman but in reality it makes you less human it definitely makes you less human the, i mean the, the farther away you get from actual biology and the more into electronics and cyborg technology and implants mm -hmm. the less human you become you become a machine yeah. but that's what society wants the global elite anyway they want people to act like little robots mm -hmm. so why not just start putting robot parts into your head yeah. or into your heart or into your kidneys and turn you into an actual robot i mean that that is coming you think about war they don't want feeling, thinking soldiers on the battlefield right they want robots that will do as they're told that can see in the dark and shoot civilians without having an ethical question raised. Well, and that's why they're always uh, shooting them up with drugs at the end, especially these antipsychotic drugs, because these guys can't take what they're doing. It's driving them nuts. And a lot of those drugs cause, of course, memory lapse. Mm -hmm. So they don't even remember what happened, which is very convenient for the Pentagon, because then the soldiers can't go on the radio and speak about how they were put in a dangerous situation or ab abused you know, chemically abused, for example, whatever happened to them, they don't even remember it anymore because of the drugs. Right. This, this reminds me, not even of Terminator, but I think there was a, a Van Damme, Jean-Claude Van Damme movie called Super Soldier or something like that. And yeah, that sounds right. They, they were, you know, they were they had their implants put in, but they were better. But yeah, they had no feeling in what they were doing. They were all total mindless, mind, zomb mind numb zombies. And um, that, but, that looks, that's what looks like the future coming, you know, from... That's what they want to do. Maddie I mean, Mintz. I'm sure they want to clone soldiers. I'm right. sure they want cyborg soldiers. I'm sure they, they want to raise them in a, an environment like that movie, The Island. Yeah. Where they're all yeah. raised in this fictional environment and, and told lies about, you know, you can't go to the outside world because it's been destroyed by radiation. So right. I'm sure they're working on these technologies because it is humanity yeah. that gives us the hope to stop violence. Yeah. It's, it's people's conscience. It's people's hearts. 
It's the humanity in us that can actually bring us peace. It's not going to be people playing Xbox, but actually flying drones into places. I mean, that totally removes you from the situation and yeah. it doesn't provide any humanity or any stopgap action. You exactly. Know, you're, just, you're going just in. It's a video game. Well, okay, the last thing I wanted to bring up with you, and I, I talked with you about this last night, um, was the, the box that people are put into, especially doctors. Um, you know, if you have a... Uh, there, there's a world here, I'll draw a little diagram, and the doctors are, uh, let's see, they're, they're brought into this world, here's the Red Cross, so they have this box that they're put in. Yeah. And there's this whole other world that they're never told about or educated about or they're dissuaded to go into those areas. They're, this box is here and it's got drugs and aspirin and little pills for you to take and, <laughs> and, and you know, what's your, what's your feelings on this box that they're put in well it's it's pretty cool that you drew this because it's actually very very educational you see medical school is a process by which those doctors who step outside the box are filtered out of the system mm. or would be doctors mm -hmm. so you cannot get through medical school unless you are a go along get along do what you're told robotic high IQ individual see this is the thing doctors are usually very high IQ just cerebrally you know, high IQ people, but they don't have a sense of self-navigation. They are uh, people who follow orders. Mm -hmm. And if you don't follow orders, you get kicked out very quickly. So by the end of it, you go through four years of medical school and four years of residency, and then you're inundated with uh, basically hypnotic inductions by the pharmaceutical companies. Right. Every doctor's walking around with mugs and pens and paper pads all emblazoned with the barbecue logos. Barbecue lunches? Uh, oh, yeah, it's, it's incredible. Know, they, they really treat them nice. I, when I, I was going uh, for some physical therapy, and every day they were talking about, I wonder what so-and-so is going to bring us. It was a drug you know? company. It was a drug company. Yeah. yeah. No, I've, I've talked to nurses who say the drug companies would bring in a dozen donuts, and mm. it would be like a diabetes drug company. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Here, get more diabetes. You they're, know? they're getting more, uh, more patients for them, I guess. Yeah. You know? yeah, and it, it really, uh, I had... Uh, when we were going through the vaccine issue with both my kids, I had these talks with both the doctors, and I would bring in stacks of, you know, articles and studies and showing them things, and, you know, they said, oh, well, you've done your research, you've done your research. I'm like, yeah, I have. You well, know? that drives them nuts, too, because yeah. doctors are also used to being right. Right. They're used yeah. to being told from the time they're little kids in elementary school, they're always the ones who knew all the answers. So they're used to being told, oh, you must be right because you're smarter than everyone else. Mm -hmm. What freaks doctors out is when smart guys like you and me, because I was always at the top of my class academically as well, mm -hmm. but I can get outside the box. Right. And then we can challenge their you know, programming yeah. with intelligence that is based on more of an open-minded understanding of reality. That Observation and common sense. Well, you know, absolutely. That's, that's yeah. a lot of it, what, what it is. And, you know, you have this box here, but the educational system, that's a box that's been, they've been doing this since the 1900s. They've put us in this box and pretend that this is the only way the world has worked since the beginning of time, and it's, you know, death and taxes, and, um, and, and listen to your doctor and listen to the authority figures. Here's the teacher. They know what's best. Don't question it. And yeah, so sure. it's, it's essentially we've been putting this series of boxes. Our whole society is, is, is you know, Different boxes, big boxes, put in bigger boxes. Yeah, so, so true. L uh, layers of boxes, and most people who say think outside the box are still living inside the box. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it, it, even, even us, to some extent, we could still get more outside the box, and, and we're working on it. But at least where we are right now, we can see how many other people are trapped in the prison that they can't even detect. Right, yeah, totally. R Alex did an interview with Richard Stallman yesterday, Dr. Stallman, who doesn't use any type of computer or any type of program that you have to do one of these agreements with. You know, like I agree. Oh, yeah. And agree yeah, it's all free software. So he can manipulate wow. it, do what he wants with. I don't know how he does it, but he apparently, you know, is able to do it and uh, travels around and that's his mantra is free software. If it ain't free, I don't use it. Hey, on our website, Natural News, we actually had a terms of agreement for a long time that said, by using this website, you agree to fly with monkeys and pay me a million dollars. Ah, and everybody agreed everybody to that. Agreed. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> well, nobody ever reads those no. things, you know, no one ever. They just like, just give me the software, please. We, so. One guy actually complained. He actually, in like eight years, one guy read it and he sent us a complaint. So we removed the flying monkeys oh, part. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, one out of how many? I don't know. Hundreds millions, of thousands, yeah. millions, yeah. All right, well, Mike, thanks hey, for coming in, thank talking you, with us. And uh, it was very enlightening and enjoyed you on the radio today.
And uh, that's our show for today. I appreciate you for joining us. It's Friday, January 20th, and this is the InfoWars Nightly News.